just going to talk a bit about the equipment to start with um, and then we'll go through how to perform the procedure and, and what we're going to be doing. So we need to start off obviously sort of having a chat with the patient, um, discussing the indications for the chest strain um, and then making them aware of what's going to happen. Um, gaining their consent and then we'll just check our equipment. So to start off with, um, we're going to need some local anaesthetic, so some lignocaine in a syringe uh, with a needle on the end of it. It's probably going to need to be a bigger syringe than a 5 mil needle. Um, then we're going to need um, some uh, chloroprep or something to clean the skin with. For argument's sake, this piece of tissue paper is going to be sort of a surrogate for that today. Um, you're then going to need your scalpel to make an incision into the skin. You're going to need um, a pair of forceps um, to do some blunt dissection. You're going to need something to hold your drain with. And then you're going to need a clamp for your drain when you're inserting it. And finally, you're going to need a suture to tie it all in place. Okay, so let's start off. So first thing you're going to do is identify the correct patient and you're on the correct side, um, sort of as the pathology is, and you're then going to identify your landmarks. So feel down from the manubrious sternal notch and then we're going to count down to the intercostal space that we're interested in. And here it's going to be the fifth intercostal space. Okay, so we're going to identify the intercostal space with our fingers. And then when we're happy we're at the right landmark, we're going to infiltrate some local anaesthetic. Okay, so putting a bleb underneath the skin to start with. Okay, aspirating and injecting some local anaesthetic. Okay, and then going perpendicular to the chest wall. Again, aspirating and injecting local anaesthetic. And keeping on going until we get to the interpleural space and then you should be able to withdraw um, and get some bubbles back into your syringe to confirm you're in the right place. Okay, so we're going to come out of that hole and we're going to make a note of where that is. Okay, um, we're then going to um, make an incision over that point and the important part of this is to make sure that it's wide enough um, to get our fingers and our drains in in a minute. Okay, so again, in the intercostal space, we're going to make a generous enough incision. Okay. And then we're going to blunt dissect down in between the ribs. Okay, so we're going to feel for where we are. And then we'll get our dissector. Okay, so we're going to sp spread out the, mus the intercostal muscles and subcutaneous tissue until we're happy we're in the right space. Okay, you might need to get your finger in there just to open that up as well. Okay, and back with the dilators. Okay, so leaving that in the right place as a marker and then pop our drain on our drain forceps. Okay, and we're going to insert this into the same place. Okay, so just passing it over the introducer. Okay, and take out our marking forceps. Take that off our drain and ensuring that this drain is in up to the eyelets. Okay, I'm passing it into place. Okay, this has got a bung on the end of it at the moment, so that's going to stop fluid coming out of it. We can also clamp it. And then we're then going to need to stitch it into place. So start off just by taking some skin. and anchoring that into place. Okay, and it might be an idea to remove the needle at this point. Okay, put that aside. And then several wraps around the drain. with a knot at the end of it to tie in place. Okay, and then we can open up the drain.